20 years ago, it cost hundreds of millions of dollars to sequence a person's genome. Today, the cost of genomic testing is just a few thousand dollars. Bioinformatics tools for interpreting genomic sequencing data have also improved dramatically. We've entered a new era in disease gene discovery. That means more families are getting answers to their questions and genetic conditions that previously baffled experts are being identified and named. Hi, I'm John Christodoulou and I lead an international team which recently identified an extremely rare genetic brain disorder. This discovery is documented in the January issue of Brain in the paper entitled NAXD Deficiency, a Novel Neurodegenerative Disorder Exacerbated by Febrile Illness. Researchers from Australia, the US, Luxembourg, the UK, Spain, India and Germany collaborated in this research project and we identified six children who had a very similar clinical picture. This included episodes of encephalopathy and progressive neurological damage, usually precipitated by what might otherwise have been a mild febrile illness. During such episodes, many of the children developed severe necrotic lesions, which in some instances was described as toxic epidermal necrolysis. Two of them developed a cardiomyopathy. Sadly, all of these children died before they reached adulthood. This figure shows brain MRI scans for three of the patients. The arrows indicate symmetrical basal ganglia involvement and the serial scans from the first case show the neurodegenerative progression of the disorder. Using whole exome or genome sequencing, we identified homozygous or compound heterozygous variants in NAXD. These were predicted to be pathogenic and presumed loss of function variants. In fact, we were most surprised to eventually determine that uh, the sixth case was heterozygous for a de novo missense variant uh, in one NAXD allele and was mosaic for a de novo missense variant in the other NAXD allele. My colleagues will elaborate. The NAXD gene encodes for an enzyme that is called NADHX dehydratase. NADHX is a damaged form of the central metabolic enzyme cofactor NADH. NADHX cannot be used as an enzyme cofactor and NADHX has been shown to potently inhibit certain metabolic enzymes. The NAXD enzyme reconverts damaged NADHX back to the healthy NADH cofactor. As such, the NAXD enzyme acts as a metabolite repair enzyme. Using a method based on liquid chromatography coupled to high resolution mass spectrometry, we could show that patient fibroblasts accumulate high levels of damaged NADHX. By contrast, we could not detect any NADHX in fibroblasts derived from healthy control subjects. We also produced recombinant versions of the NAXD uh, enzymes that carried point mutations that are found in some of the patients. We measured the enzymatic activity of these mutant versions of NAXD. We found that the mutant NAXD variants repaired damaged NADHX less efficiently than the wild-type NAXD enzyme, especially when increasing temperature. These results further support the causal implication of NAXD in the neurological disorder and may partially explain why the onset of the disease symptoms coincided with episodes in fever in the patients. Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Van Bergen from the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. NADH metabolites are essential for many cellular processes. These metabolites are most concentrated in the mitochondria. NADH is a key metabolite of the mitochondrial respiratory chain. As Dr. Linster described earlier, patients with pathogenic mutations in NAXD accumulate toxic levels of NADHX. Therefore, the accumulation of NADH derivatives may impede many cellular functions, including key mitochondrial dehydrogenases of the respiratory chain. Analysis of mitochondrial function in both patient fibroblasts and muscle biopsies revealed a significant reduction in the activity of multiple respiratory chain enzymes. When protein levels were analyzed in patient fibroblasts, we found a significant reduction in the levels of both complex 1 and complex 4. Mitochondrial dysfunction can also be revealed by culturing cells in restrictive media containing galactose but no glucose. This limits ATP production by glycolysis 
and forces cells to produce ATP by oxidative phosphorylation. When patient cells were cultured under these conditions, there was a significant decrease in the growth rate compared to control fibroblasts. Together, this data supports the notion that mitochondrial function in NAXD patients is severely compromised. Therefore, NAXD deficiency appears to have negative effects on cellular metabolism. This will have devastating consequences on key tissues such as the brain and the heart that are critically reliant on efficient energy metabolism. Now that we understand the underlying genetic basis of the disorder, we can ask if targeted treatments can be developed. To this end, we are planning to develop induced pluripotent stem cells from patients, which we can then push down on neuronal lineage and further unpack the basic biology of the disorders. We also plan to develop and use Drosophila and zebrafish models to test new therapeutic avenues in the hope that we might be able to ameliorate or even prevent disease progression for children with mutations in NAXD or NAXE.